Hi, I'm Father John, and I want to welcome you to St. Elizabeth's uh, electronically through our YouTube channel. This is our Sunday service for uh, the fifth Sunday in Lent, and I'm glad that uh, Julie, our organist, and two of our choir members, Georgine and Kathy, are able to be with us. We will be modeling viral distancing during the whole service, keeping uh, far apart, and we hope that you are keeping viral distancing at home. We're just delighted that you've chosen to worship uh, through this video. I invite you to imagine that you're here, uh, to put yourself into the presence of God, and to allow God to work in you, and to make your own spiritual contribution to this worship. Uh, it's different to do it through the video, but during this time, it's what's available to us. So welcome to St. Elizabeth. We're glad you're here, glad you chose to begin your week worshiping the one who loves us. We will hear a prelude and then have a time of silence, and we will stand and sing. You can find uh, the leaflet, if you would like to follow the leaflet, you can find it, a link to it will be located in the description below this video. Thank you so much uh, for worshiping with us.
bless God who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thus says the Lord God, 
I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you all on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and will act, says the Lord. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about her brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. 
Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the one, holy, living, and triune God. Amen. This is a really incredible story, and it touches people very deeply. Uh, it touches people because there's so many elements of it that we can connect to. Um, we connect so deeply to uh, the fact that this family has deep grief and loss at their brother. And uh, we see how much he was loved by them and how much he is missed by them already. And we're also moved to this passage because it really illustrates the power of friendships and the uh, capacity for them to know one another and care for one another and also to trust in one another. And one of the striking things in the story is that normally they trust Jesus, and yet in this case it appears that Jesus has let them down. And then of course there's the huge, the huge joy in the story that Lazarus comes forth, he comes back to life, that which was taken away from us is returned to us, that which had died and passed away uh, enters back into our lives with all of its power. And it's very hard not to recognize in that a description of many aspects of Jesus' own resurrection, even down to the details of what he was wrapped in and where he was buried. And then, of course, there's two very famous lines 
In this gospel, which are very meaningful, there's the one where Jesus was deeply moved when he sees the grief of all the people around him. And there's also this uh, phrase that Jesus wept. In the King James Version, it was Jesus wept. Uh, probably a better translation than the one we read, Jesus began to weep. But nonetheless, this deep portrayal of Jesus' humanity and that he shares his life with us. There is this comfort that Jesus too could have sorrow at the death of his friend. It's a moving story. And that's exactly how I received the story. Until that fateful day, I walked into Canon Fenton's office and sat down for my tutorial. And he suggested to me another reading of the story, and one that was, um, at the time, actually, to be honest, I, um, I resisted this meaning, this reading of the story. He suggested that, yes, Jesus cared deeply for his friends and for their grief, but that Jesus also wept because the understanding of the life that Jesus has to give them was, was lacking. There's this sense that the life that Jesus gives us is just to return us to our old way of life, to give us more days, to give us more years, to make us have more of what we already have. It's like an acquisition that Jesus give us this life we want to live every day, you know, even though we might waste many of them in front of the television or we might uh, waste many of them procrastinating. I, I, I'm sure some of you out there must procrastinate. I wouldn't know who else does that. You know, but with this idea that we just want more and more of this life and of normal life and of the life we're accustomed to. And Canon Fenton is saying, no, he is weeping. Jesus is weeping. Because they don't yet know what's at his heart. They don't yet know the true gift he has to give them. And that is that life lived in communion with God. Life lived deeply in God's wisdom. Life pregnant with God's power. Life characterized by the very love and generosity of God that this is what Jesus brings us. And death has nothing to do with it. Death is just a point, a stage in an ordinary biological life. But communion with God, love of God, and to love neighbor deeply because, that we, because we love God, this is something that transcends time and space. This isn't just more of the same life. This is new life. And this is what we see in Jesus. This is what Jesus shows us. This is what Jesus has. He says, you know, I and the Father, I and the Father are one. And He does the work of His Father. And then if we love Him, we will love one another. The invitation that Jesus brings us is not just to fix a broken biological human life, although he brings much healing to life. I don't want to minimize the goodness that God pours out to us even in this life, but that he is inviting us to live life completely afresh and anew and in wonder. There was a story this week which I thought kind of hints at this concept. It was a story I heard on the radio about a truck driver. And uh, this truck driver, I mean, he was a young man. He was really delightful to hear. And he had an energy about it, sharing his story uh, that was really contagious, actually. Um, even through the radio, uh, he had a power and a joy and a depth to him. He was like, you know, the essence of truck driver. And he said that he had come to realize how important his job was. He was a third generation truck driver. His father had been a truck driver and his grandfather had been a truck driver. I think he drove for Walmart and he had a great deal of respect for the company he worked for. And um, he said that during this time when we were all 
viral distancing, you know, I use the term viral distancing, we're not trying to separate ourselves from each other, we're trying to separate ourselves from the virus and separate our neighbors from the virus. During this time of viral distancing, when people have found they need so many things at home or they have found that they want to hoard, hoard so many things at home, whichever way you want to look at it, the importance of transporting these goods really became real to him. And not only that, he said it's become real to other people. There are people on some of the uh, exit ramps to the uh, interstate near truck stops. They hold signs up that say, thank you truckers. And he, he became aware that this was not just a way for him to make a living. This was not just a way for him to carry on a family tradition. This was not just a way uh, for him to... Um, uh, have an occupation that he loved, this was a, a uniting thing. He put food on the tables of all of these families sitting at home wondering how all this is going to turn out. His work became communion. His work became something new and wonderful. And he really appreciated that. At the end, he told the truck drivers, believe, believe. You know, what you're doing is important, and I really am proud of you. And, and what we're doing together, we're being a team. What we're doing together is wonderful. And this is what Jesus is asking the people in Bethany to understand. Yes, he could heal Lazarus. He can give Lazarus more life. And that's an important sign of what they call a type a foretelling of his own resurrection. What he's really trying to tell them is, you can have life of such a depth, of such an abundance, of such a unity with God, a communion with one another, a love. You can be part of the healing of the universe. You can be part of God's creativity, creating new and wonderful things in the realm of the Spirit and in the realm of relationships. He's saying to them, can you realize that the human life can be so much more, and I have come to bring it to you. That's the mission of the church. The mission of the church is to imitate the unity Jesus had with God, the complete trust in God, the desire to do the work of God. And I think during this time of viral distancing, we can take some time to look at our own lives and say, am I really enjoying my unity with God? Am I, am I really enjoying doing the work of God? Do I have enough faith to make that my goal? Because quite frankly, you have, we have to let go of our own desire for acquisition. We have to let go of our own desire for more and more, we have to open up our hearts to being caregivers for our neighbor. And also at times letting our neighbor be the caregiver of us when we're in need. It's about letting this communion happen. happen. There are many ways to do that. I know one person who's taking this time to write a book he's been working on for quite a long time. It's about his uh, grand, great grandfather, I believe. And uh, he's taking advantage of this time to tell a story he really wants to tell. And so, yes, he's locked at home, but he's actually engaged in an activity that he hopes will be able to communicate this wonderful story, create connections and communions with one another. I hope some of us sitting at home will realize that we're not spending nearly as much money as we did before. And we'll take the time to go and visit the Community Helping site, Helping Places website and make, make some a donation because they are really strapped at this time. So many people. Our, I'm really, really upset that our country cannot just let people stay at home for two months. This is somehow be a disaster. As though we didn't know a pandemic was coming. They've been telling us all my life that a pandemic was coming. And we were totally caught by surprise. And all of us who are doing well, we're doing fine at home. We have the stuff we need. But we have all these people who don't have what they have, don't have what they need. We, we as a country need to ask some real questions after this pandemic. But in the meanwhile, can we individually take that new life of Christ 
and, and go and find some resources and give them to the community helping place. And if any of us are in not at risk categories, and that's not many of our current congregation, but they need some people to go and volunteer there to replace people who are at risk, who are still there distributing food. That would be another way. Yeah, when we're in that situation, our lives are in a greater heightened degree of danger. I'm not advising anyone to do this recklessly. But there's this realization that the life Jesus gives us is just not just more of this life. It's a life of deep wisdom and creativity. This image in Ezekiel is very profound. This idea that there is this valley of dry bones. And the prophet proclaims the word of the Lord. He proclaims God's presence, God's love, God's creative power, God's vision of our lives together. When he proclaims that word, those bones come to life. I think that's what Jesus is doing. He's looking at our lives, and although the truest thing about us is communion with God, the reality is we know that's truly who we are. We know the truest thing about us is connection to the universe and creativity. We know that about ourselves. But somehow in our routines and in our desire to survive and in our accumulation, our life becomes like a heap of bones. Dry. Rattly. Bleached white rather than colorful. And Jesus says, God is with us and we come to life. Whether we live or whether we die, whether we're well or whether we're ill, whether we have plenty or whether we are in want, that new life with God transcends all and gives us our very souls. In the name of the one holy living and trying God. Amen. joining with generations of those who have said yes to the new life of Christ, we stand and proclaim our faith, saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and returned him to his family. As we prepare for the Paschal Feast, let us earnestly beseech God to revive our church and our world for justice and peace. For the Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, sharing the death and resurrection of Christ. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Robert, our bishop, John, Paul, and Walton, our priests, and for all who minister in Christ, and for all who follow the way of love. Lord, have mercy. For all people following Lenten disciplines, and for all who will be baptized at Easter. Lord, have mercy. For all nations, peoples, communities, and families. Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, Brian, our governor, Sam, our mayor, Chris, chairperson of the county commissioners, for all who work for the safety of others, especially all in the military. Lord, have mercy. For a swift end to the current pandemic. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For our health care system, for all who are responding through their actions, and for all who are ill and all who undergo financial and personal difficulty during the pandemic. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Alice, Scott, Sue, Devon, Davis, Pam, Elise, Mary, Jackie, Natalie, Paul, Rosa, Pat, Pete, Henry, Angie, Leonard, Linda, Terry, Mark, Jenna, Dorothy, Russell, Deborah, Kay, Tom, Pat, Christy, Keegan, Brian, and all who desire our prayers. Lord, have mercy. For Warren, Gail, and all those who begin a new year of life, and for all those who celebrate another year of life together. Lord, have mercy. For the peacemakers, for all local service organizations, for all who serve others, and for all who are served. Lord, have mercy. For the dying and the dead, especially Dr. Joseph Lowry, and for all who grieve. Lord, have mercy. For our families, friends, and companions, and for all those we love. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of our parish church. Proclaiming God's word, celebrating God's love, sharing God's gifts. Remembering the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Elizabeth of Hungary, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Blessed are you, God of grace, who revives us again and again. Bless us as we prepare for the yearly remembrance of Christ's passion and resurrection, for the life that is eternal. Receive the prayers we offer this day for those in need in every place, and heal all those in trouble of body, mind, or heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to go to the church website uh, to see all the news, especially go to our Thursday update, uh, update on the church website, which is delanagachurch.com. You can go to news, and then you'll see a list of our weekly newsletters. Just click there, and you can read a dozen past issues, but I invite you especially to read the most recent issue. I especially want to uh, ask those who are uh, using this a video on Sunday morning as your worship that afterwards we will have a Zoom coffee hour. And you just simply have to go to the church website and uh, go to the calendar. I suggest you choose the agenda view and you'll see the events there. Just click on one and it will tell you how to um, come to the Zoom meeting or where you can go to see some, some activity that might stream or where you might go to see a video. So all of that information is right there. Uh, I do ask you, uh, although we can't receive the offerings here, I do ask that you will uh, send in your contributions and your pledges to the church. We do need them at this time. Um, uh, the bills continue to come in, uh, but we also understand that you will do what you can't do. And we're thankful for anything that you do do. Um, if you have a friend or someone that you miss, give them a call, open the parish directory and call. The executive committee will be tomorrow finding a way to have us be sure that everyone is called. So we're, we're on top of that task. Thank you for visiting with us here. Uh, we're about to celebrate Holy Communion, and sadly we cannot have all of you here in the presence to receive communion. I want to assure you that those who truly desire the sacrament in their heart, the prayer book assures us, receive the grace of the Holy Communion. And I will say a prayer for a spiritual communion after the celebration of the Eucharist. I felt there might be some comfort in, in having a celebration of the Eucharist, even though you were unable to be here. Um, and we can just think uh, delightedly to that time when we will all be back together here. Thank you, and we will now continue our service. Mm -hmm.
the Eucharistic prayer is Eucharistic Prayer C. If you have your Book of Common Prayer, you can follow it on page 369. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By His blood He reconciled us, by His wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise You, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Elizabeth of Hungary, and with all those in every generation who have looked to You in hope to proclaim with them Your glory in their unending hymn. Jesus Christ, 
Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in His name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite those who are watching to make a spiritual communion, and I will say the prayer for spiritual communion, one of the many options available. Jesus, you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Eucharist. I love you above all else, and I desire you in the depths of my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come through the Holy Spirit into my heart, with the fullness of your healing and gracious presence. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. 
Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. 